This week has been a bit of a rough ride for Star Citizen, with fans finding themselves on a bit of a roller coaster. So, what's happened? Well, nothing less than extensive Squadron 42 footage apparently being leaked, along with people claiming that studio director Erin Roberts has drunkenly admitted that Squadron 42 is at least two years away. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of backers feel that they have been betrayed by CIG as they snatch away the prestige of a in-game reward. And to not outdo themselves, CIG are being contradictory about the next big release. When is it coming? No one knows. Not even the CIG, it seems. What's more, all of this could turn on a dime and completely change with the big climax of CitizenCon. So it's definitely a bit of a roller coaster. Let's get into those details. We begin with the alleged Squadron 42 leak. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show that footage on the video right here. Uh, mainly because there's a good chance that CIG may request the video to be taken down if I do. That said, the footage is still available out there and is very easy to find. Just do a Google search for SQ42 leak. The video is 9 minutes long and shows a load of in-game footage or in-engine footage. To me, the footage looks absolutely beautiful, very, very detailed and, well, totally gorgeous really. Although that said, some parts of it do certainly feel sci-fi generic. The footage then covers a variety of scenes set in space, rather spectacular looking ships, some ship to ship combat. It also features some stunning looking planetary scapes, as well as areas inside what appear to be stations and buildings. It's a nice insight then into what Squadron 42 should look like, assuming of course that this is indeed related to the current version of the game. The main criticism seems to be that the footage shows virtually no gameplay, with just a few seconds of clips of a character walking around in the first person. Now the claims seem to be that this footage originated back in 2019 and was from an internal demo reel that CIG had put together. Quite naturally though, there's no confirmation on this one way or the other, and CIG themselves have remained completely quiet. The strange thing is that the leaked video on YouTube so far has not been removed. On the one hand, this could be because it's been relatively low viewed up to this point. Alternatively, some fringe theories suspect that this may be an intentional leak, although personally, I really do doubt that. Other theories suspect that this may not be a leak from 2019, but rather a leak from a preview video that will be coming in CitizenCon. Whatever way we cut it though, this is probably not great news for CIG, but you know, pretty decent news for people who wanted to have a bit of insight into a Squadron 42. There is another downside to all of this though. Squadron 42 apparently is still a very long way away. But where does this information come from? Well, at this point it is a rumour, but it comes from what appears to be a fairly solid source. It comes from a community event, a bar citizen that took place recently in Korea. The claim is that Erin Roberts, studio director, got a bit too drunk and revealed that Squadron 42 is at least two years away. He apparently said that, that date isn't hard and fast, but is rather a working date. It's also said that he suggested that Squadron 42 will contain over 80 hours of gameplay. Naturally, this has led to a lot of speculation all across the internet, throughout the official Spectrum forums, Reddit, as well as on numerous YouTube videos, as of course Discord as well. Now, it turns out that neither CIG nor Erin himself have denied these comments, so there is that. And to be perfectly honest here, I really don't think many people would be surprised if that is the release window, or indeed if it's even further out. Whilst some um, Squadron 42 and Star Citizen fanatics will try and argue the point, development on these titles began around 2012. If it's heading for a late 2024 release or even a 2025 release, that means around 13 years in development. There's potential then for it beginning development in the era of the PlayStation 3 and releasing in the era of the PlayStation 6. Yeah, quite the achievement. Now, moving on to the event that's caused quite the uproar in the recent days. This is to do with an in-game item reward. What's more, it was originally intended to be a unique item and therefore highly prized by players. The way to access this item was to achieve a certain number of PvP kills. It meant that the item would be awarded to those who were best suited to a PvP playstyle. But people soon figured out how to cheese the item. They participated in what become known as conga lines, mutual PvP killing, I kill you, 
you kill me and keep repeating this until we achieve enough kills to unlock the item. So yeah, to be fair, this would to an extent reduce the prestige of this item. But this isn't where it ended. What ultimately happened is that CIG pretty much decided to give the item away to everyone. And that's after these people worked very hard to unlock the item. So how did CIG change the rules? Well, they didn't exactly give the item to everyone. Instead, they made it lootable in game. So yeah, anyone can go out and very easily claim it. Understandably, the backlash from players has been quite extreme, at least in some quarters, whilst other players really seem not to care. Just maybe how much someone cares depends on how much they play the game. Now, CIG have responded to this. Director of Community Tyler Whitkins has posted a rather extensive forum post, which was also posted to Twitter. He explained that the event had been created by the community team and not the dev team, and therefore wasn't officially supported by in-game code. He went on to say, In hindsight, I wish we had not done this event. I do not consider it successful. It really came down to my eagerness to provide in-game earnables and forcing it into existence, when it should have been driven by development with proper in-game support, which it is now. Further on, he clarified that the Vandul Mask is not a good representation of the future in-game earnables. It was a premature attempt, my fault. The dev team has far more exciting and complex plans when it comes to looting, and I'm really excited to share more when we can. So, whilst CIG definitely appear to have messed up here, hats off to Tyler Whitkins for being so open and honest. It really is refreshing to see this type of interaction with the community without all the unnecessary spin and BS that often accompanies this from some other developers. The next big part of this whole roller coaster is the next big update that many people are waiting for, patch 3.18. So back in May's letter from the chairman, Chris Roberts said that patch 3.18 would be in testing for around about three months. He then said that this is hard to predict, implying that it could be even longer due to the complexity of the update. Jump forward a few months and in September, CIG was stating that 3.18 would be on the PTU in September. We're now in October and there still is no sign of it. Now, where it gets additionally confusing and seems a CIG are contradicting themselves is they've said that 3.18 would be available alongside IAE. This is the Interstellar Aerospace Expedition, a sort of in-game showroom where players can see brand new ships. This is currently scheduled to release on the 19th of November. For this to happen then, patch 3.18 would need to arrive onto the live servers in early November. Which means without some sort of time dilation service, the patch cannot be on the PTU for two to three months. So the deal is that CIG are either not going to fully test 3.18 or that it's going to be delayed. Either way, it's very confusing and no one seems to know the answer, but there is much speculation and many people wondering what exactly is going on. Now, the answer to all of this could come with the latest CitizenCon, which is scheduled for this weekend. No doubt CIG will be given a showcase for upcoming content. Maybe a part of that will be announcements for 3.18, or maybe it will be another look at Pyro, the much-delayed star system, which, well, may not even make 2023 at this point. I know some people will argue with me on that point. But the fact remains that at the beginning of 2022, Many people suspected it to be arriving at the end of 2022, or maybe at the very latest, early 2023. Of course, there's no sign of that, that's patch 4.0, and meanwhile, we're still waiting on a patch 3.18. Oh, and in the final note, to round everything off nicely, another unexpected patch arrived a little while ago, patch 3.17.3. This included, amongst other things, a nerf to ground vehicle speed, slowing them right down. It means that, to all intents and purposes, most ground vehicles now have similar or same speed. A racing buggy, for example, now has the same speed as a mining vehicle. Very strange. The real kicker here is that upcoming new vehicles very likely are going to have a higher speed. These, quite naturally, are going to be sold on the cash shop. I can't think of a single reason that CIG would slow down existing vehicles. So yeah, a week of self-goalers, and unfortunately combined with somewhat a bit of a player backlash. Let's see then what happens with CitizenCon. 
Will it turn everything around and make everything nice and bright and rosy? Or will it be another problem? Hopefully the former rather than the later. I would of course be discussing the upcoming CitizenCon coverage, so do keep an eye out for that video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.